And you're Paul? Paul. Okay. Paul Freeves, yeah. All right. Well, tell, tell everybody who you are, what you do, why you do it. Well, Frank's been helping me with Strong Arm products, Mr. Mr. Strong Arm himself, for years now. Uh, when I first started racing at Bonneville, it was interesting because we built the custom bikes to race out there. We built the throttle cables um, to run special carburetors and stuff. We got back home, um, let the bike sit for a week or two, went to go play with it, and the um, throttle cables just snapped right off. Um, they were already rusted away. Already rusted away, got inside the center of the cables, and just the, the environment that you're in, the salt got there. We started assembling our cables with strong arm, and since 2007, we've been racing to 2013 with the same throttle cables. <laughs> never had a throttle cable break, never had a throttle cable come loose at the swaging where we put the, the ends on. Six uh, seasons. Six seasons of just using strong And before arm. that, you only got one season out of it. One season. And we were assembling with um, lubricants, um, other manufacturers' lubricants and stuff. But after washing and cleaning the bikes, it would just remove the, the lubricant. And we wouldn't have the success we've been having. Um, I haven't had an axle stick on me since we've been racing out of Bonneville. We assemble axles, we assemble bearings, everything using the strong arm product. Uh -huh. um, the aluminum, a lot of our motorcycles have aluminum gas tanks, aluminum fittings, um, and the deterioration of the aluminum is massive um, in the salt environment. Again, before we race, before we go out there, we polish clean the bikes, and then we do is we take a light rag, and we wash the whole bike off with Armstrong, just very lightly, wipe everything down with Armstrong, and the salt virtually falls off of the aluminum. Mm -hmm. um, what happens, it doesn't collect anymore. Well, what happens with the salt out at the Bonneville is once you've aerated the salt, you've got it up off the ground, mm -hmm. um, it has the ability to dry out and it turns into a concrete. Um, if you have a dry surface where the stuff can attach to, you physically either have to wash it off with water or chisel it off the motorcycle. With a strong arm product, you can physically walk up to that motorcycle, tap that salt and it just drops off yeah, engine casings on cylinders. So it's, and like, it's, like a, it's like a mold release. So it's basically like a mold release agent that you use. And what about at 150 miles an hour? That salt is swinging up off oh. that tire. It's like a sandblaster. Oh, absolutely. It's like taking a sandblast machine and putting rock salt in it and sandblasting your parts. Parts. So, yeah. And it does not strip away the strong arm. And anybody that does that, that would be insanity. Yeah. The sandblast parts with salt. We use it as a um, nut and bolt release agent. Um, before we assemble the nuts and bolts, mm -hmm. we actually coat it with right, exactly. strong yeah. arm. Thread we, we use it on the stainless steel hardware as a Stainless steel nuts and bolts tend to foul. Mm -hmm. uh, we use it as a lubricant for the stainless steel nuts and bolts, so yeah. they spin on and off. We don't it's have the best, it. it keeps, it's an anti-seizing. Yeah, anti-seizing device. So um, it has definitely stood up to every every questionable doubt that we've had with any part of the motorcycle. As will this come apart? Will this stay rust proof? Will this re last? Um, we use it on the chains. We use it on the sprockets. We use it on. Just about every application we can tire find. Tire to tire. Yeah, tire to tire. Wiring. You put it inside the rims before you put the rubber on? Yep, yep. It's um, inside the axles, inside the bearing sleeve spaces, mm -hmm. um, anywhere that we, we physically... Any kind of a cavity that's going to sit there. While yeah, um, mm -hmm. and it definitely holds up to the product. Wipe down the leather. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is strong armed. This, yeah. this Isn't coating is here. Yeah. <laughs> that, this was a, a light tan color before. We strong armed it. It's given it a deep patina, mm -hmm. a deep rich color. Exactly, a natural patina. Yeah. Not the patina of corrosion. Yeah. People think corrosion is patina. They, they got their wires crossed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I have been ecstatic with the product. Uh, well, we, we are good to hear it. We're trying to get the information not because we want to just collect it. Well, we want to collect the information and archive it, but we want to have it available for people that don't can't quite get understand what this is. Yeah. That I think it's the same thing as everything else that's in the world. And the strong arm is a different world. When you use this, your world changes. It becomes a different world. A world where there's no rust, no corrosion, any way you, you administer the product. What, what I also like about What about it? all your tools out at Bonneville? You got tools out there. Oh, yeah. You, you, the trailer, yeah. The, 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 the hitches, the, 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 uh, the, the, the receiver pin, on the, the back. Receiver. Everything gets done. That's, that's trash. Yeah. Um, it has a great uh, a dielectrical strength. We uh -huh. use it on the magneto oh. and the magneto yeah. oh, caps um, to stop yeah. the salt penetration uh -huh. in, into those areas. Yeah. Um, yeah Morris use... loves it on his mags. He used it in his in his lab. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. Morris. Morris goes crazy. So um, 
you know, I can't think of any any application that you you would not be completely confident in using this product. It's it's as I say, I've um, I've been sold on it, and um, you know, I wouldn't go to Bonneville yep. without it. <laughs> it's uh, the the product itself is just fantastic. I mean, I can't think of anything. I, I've used everything from every different country in the world, and uh, well, you've been all around the world, right? Yeah. How many generations have you of your uh, genealogy has been out on the salt? Uh, two generations, my father and myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's raced as well. Um, but uh, no, it's um, you know if you're going to do any any form of uh, repair, and did you make a complete set of viable instructions and functionality that this product will apply? directly into that industry. I would look at it as an industry. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're talking about like when we mount the tires, the, the contact yeah. patch between the rubber and the rim, where the salt gets in between uh -huh. and you get that corrosion stock. Uh, when I first started racing, I, when I got back from Bonneville the first year, I had my tires were going flat on, on the naturally aspirated race bike. Uh -huh. And after we took the tires, uh, dismounted the tires and had a look and see we actually had corrosion building between the rubber and the and the rim. Okay. And really? this this had formed an air leak on my front tire on the motorcycle. So the tire, it, the tire it, was it going compromised the, the seal. It compromised the seal between the rubber and the yeah, rim. The, the, bead, rim. So, the bead would die. Yeah. So now before any any of the tires are mounted on the on the motorcycle, we actually go in, we clean the rims off uh -huh. with the strong arm. We use strong arm as our mount as our mounting lubricant mm -hmm. for the tubeless tires. On the beads. On the beads. And, and they slide right on. Yeah. Seven years later, uh -huh. no yeah. flat tire. Well, you, yeah. So as I say, every application, every nut and bolt that you mm -hmm. basically use, we found um, you tend to I wouldn't say get lax, but you find these applications where you bolt things together and you go, ah, oh, I'll take it apart later and preserve it mm -hmm. and protect it. Well, well you're we, busy with things. You're you know? busy with things. Now what we do is we just make sure that every nut and bolt that we have goes into a tray, a little bit of strong arm, and the assembly gets done using those nuts mm -hmm. and bolts systems. When you build a Bonneville bike or you're trying to get ready for Bonneville, you try and make sure that all your fasteners have the same size, um, either with half inch or 3 16 Allens or 9 16 mm -hmm. wrenches. Yep. So get yourself a little pile of that hardware around and just get it already pre-soaked in strong arm. That yeah, way, let it down, and lay it down, and then you're ready to go. Uh, as I was saying, that, we, that's only a couple of teaspoons worth. Yeah, to do a whole pile of bolts. Yeah, um, we use it on all the levers, all the control levers. As I was saying, the internal throttle cables and cables, mm -hmm. all the pivoting, any kind of working mechanism, the preservative that you use. When the soul gets on that machine, it's 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 cancer. Yeah. It, you know, it's 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 like AIDS. Yeah. It's going to eat that thing alive. And it stays it's a parasite. Up. Yeah. What what we actually do before we so this is worse yeah. than airborne ozone or anything like that. We get the bikes completely cleaned and and ready for for Bonneville before we actually do our first run down the salt. We actually take the Armstrong spray, put it in a mist form, and actually mist the oh, whole Oh, really? Bike, yeah, with a, with a, like a body shop paint yeah. job. So when I'm sitting on the start line for the initial first time, as the motor's heating up and stuff, you'll get the mist and the vapor of the yeah, arms, the smell to, of the Armstrong it, it, as it starts. Wow, that's cool. Vaporizing, yeah. and everybody stands back and looks at the motorcycle and what? wonders, <laughs> what the hell is going on with it because of the smoke? Yeah. But that is, I found, was the easiest way. Instead of trying to be real delicate and go, oh, we need to put some young, right, just, just we, mist the whole We call bike. it the strong arm band. Yeah, you give it a mist. strong arm band. Yes, and we do the whole bike in actual strong arm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that covers the rubber products, the painted product. I mean, mm -hmm. everything. There's, you don't have to be cautious. But oh, I can't get this on the paint. Oh, mm -hmm. I can't get this on right. the rubber. I can't get this on the electrics. I can't get this on anything. Mm -hmm. We basically just deck, deck the bolt out in a fine spray of, of mist of Armstrong, mm -hmm. and that's it done. And as I say, when we get back, it's quick and easy. The bike cleans quick. It cleans easy. Yeah, and the, even though the the iron cylinders get hot, I mean, they heat up. They're probably heating up to about. 700 degrees on the by the time you get done with your runs, run. it's not enough to really burn it off. No, no, it, it the does, it's not gone there. until you reach full yeah. manifold temperature. I, I, what I like about it is the cling aspect as well. The stuff does not once you put it down on something, it doesn't run off. A lot of products, when you apply them, mm -hmm. they will just wick off the yeah, motorcycle. Right. And, 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 and well, it, it evaporates. Yeah. See, what happens is when you put them, people say that that's too thick to be a penetrating oil, they got it wrong. What happens is the penetrant goes into the cracks of the bolt and then the strong arm puts a jacket around it. Yeah. And that jacket holds whatever is in there on the surface. Yeah. This is a different world. Strong arm is a completely different world 
than what the other products are. The, the root of the design doesn't go into what the standard products that are there. Yeah. He said, if you would have had something like this back in 1960, you yeah. would have been a, a world champion yeah, forever. It, it's changed my life when it's come to racing at Bonneville. I mean, I can't believe my uh, parts throw away has, has diminished virtually zero. Yeah, so what's the value of that? How yeah, do you, I mean, you can't... You, in, uh, the, in the course of five years, that's yeah, thousands just, of dollars. Yeah, hardware and cables and, and just wiring. I mean, it's in, not only that, but it's the time and effort that you've got to take to take the things apart yeah, and yeah, put them back that's together. That's true, that's true. How yeah. many hours of labor is that? Yeah. You know, um, I mean, you're busy building a new bike. You don't have time to take an old bike, bike and, yeah. and, and renovate it. Offset blank bullet, mm -hmm. we then grind it to the profiles that we want. We then section that off into two cams, mm -hmm. um, set it up so that it looks exactly like the original cam, then do the go through the hardening process, then cut off the lobe off the cam, index it, weld it on. Index it onto the, the onto shaft. The new, onto the new shaft, onto the new gear. So you get shaft stock and, 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 yep. and, and gear stock and all just to literally you got that done with science. Oh yeah. You've been doing that for how many years? Oh, a long time. <laughs> a long, long, long wow. time. Wow. So, and then what else do we have to show? And then, take me through there again. I want to get some of this on film. Starting with the uh, tear down section. Yeah. Uh, well, most of the work we do is vintage motors. Motors will come in. They go down to the tear down the table. From the tear down table, they'll go through a dirty parts washer, a clean parts washer, ultrasonic cleaning tank, and then a high pressure washer system uh -huh. inside there with a okay. final cleaning uh -huh. after full full strip down. Um, you've got some dirty again. And that takes that and gets that clean. Gets that clean. Um, little machine section. And these are the old school machines. Old school machines, old cast iron tables. Beautiful looking too. And they're all for service strong arm, obviously. Oh yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of people buy it and they want to clean up platens and uh, machine lay beds and uh, waves and you got the lathe over there. Yep. There's table saws. It's really and, and, uh, important about, you know, that kind of stuff. And then... There's uh, something laying around all the time. Yeah. I mean, that machine's just sitting there in the dampness. Yeah. It's the middle of the summer, 90 degrees out. And the, the, just kills. Yeah, the, it's, the air is taking its toll, the weather's taking its toll. The dirty room, this is where we, all the air tools and all the grinding is and, done. And you put strong arm in and every one of those tools. Every one of those tools is lubricated with strong arm. Isn't that amazing? It's, I mean, it and you got quite a bit of tools there. Yeah, there is oh, yeah. a lot of money. And you have each one set up for precision, certain types of functions that yeah. you perform. Yeah, so when you're doing it, you can you can just swap tools. And do you empty. port heads too? Yep. With the, so you, you're a head porter. Yeah, yeah, head porter. Yes. And, and you do cabinets. flow work? You do flow work? Yep. Uh, and you, is there, a, what bench do you flow on? Uh, are you so that's back there. Back over there, okay. we have a flow dial. Okay, so you do flowing. Flow, flow work. And then we have uh, the grinding sections with different forms of grinding. The uh -huh. are doing internal Beautiful. and external grinding. <laughs> awesome. If somebody that doesn't have a nice shop, man, <laughs> and this is a, this is a sandblasting, yeah, a yeah, whole bunch. Three, three different forms of blasting. We have a, a grit blasting machine and we use platinum slag. Then we have a bead blasting machine at the back. And then this is our peening machine for peening, uh, connecting rods okay. and bearing cages. Yeah. Uh, where we actually uh, use steel shot, round steel shot. Wow, ones. that does a nice job, right? Eh? Yeah. Well, it just does a surface strengthening. Now, what about when you do frames? When you build frames, do you certain way that you handle a frame and work on a frame? And yeah, a frame? there's a couple Painter of... Painter frames? Well, what we've been doing with the, with the really early frames is going in, putting uh, some of the tubes down. The, the factory had um, what we call uh, blow holes when they were welding the frames yeah. and brazing the frames. They put little holes in the frame so it didn't build up pressure and it didn't blow, blow the brazing out of the swage joints when they had swaged them together with with the brass, so they have holes in the bottom, in the bottom of the frame tubes. So down at the bottom of the frame tubes, you'll find little holes drilled where it could relieve the pressure. Uh, let's see where they are on this one. So you know, when they heat the metal up, it builds pressure. They had a little pressure inside. Had, it, it was relief. It was for yeah. relief. So what we do now is we go into those holes. We actually put Armstrong on the, in the inside. Strong on the strong right arm, inside the frame. Inside the frame. Inside really? The tubes to stop wow. the corrosion. Yeah. 
Because turn the frame upside down and let it just run through the yeah, frame. Run through the frame, run through the frame. But so it has another application. That, and when you're on the salt, you've got those holes exposed. Yeah. Do you ever seal the holes up or close well, them? What we do is we put, we put strong arm into the frame, uh, drain it out, and then plug the tubes with okay. the, uh, rubber plugs. Oh, so you have plugs. actual plugs to actually yeah, to plug stop. up. And once you put that strong arm in there, that's sealed forever. Yeah, it's, it's done. It's uh, indefinitely locked away. Yeah. That's, now there's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, just through the years of taking frames apart and seeing the amount of corrosion uh -huh. inside of the frame, yeah. I realized it was something I had to do to preserve. Did you ever have an issue where the frames actually rutted, rusted away from the inside out? Yeah, it we found, found that with the, with the springers, uh, with some of the early springers, because they had the same application where they have the blowhole. Yep, yep I've up. seen them. Uh, and then what will happen is this will correct moisture, this will fill up with water and Oh yeah, moisture. right at the bottom. Yeah. And the bottom part of the tube uh -huh. will actually become weak and right. broken off. Uh, I've seen them at swap meets where the bottoms are all right, rotted away. Out. Well, we do the same thing again. We put strong arm into the inside of the thing, shake it around, uh -huh. drain out the excess, plug the hole. Wow. And then it's done. We oh, know we don't have, we don't have any issue. With these these are intricate, minute little functions are, yeah. that are so so simple. Yeah. And yet it create it stops a problem that literally takes the bike. The, the bike is ruined. Or it takes a real antique piece and makes it preserves it for yeah. future generations. Uh -huh. Because yeah. this is not. So the, the museums are doing stuff like this too. Yeah. But they don't run on the salt like you do. You yeah. know. So. That's cool. So uh, where's the next uh, operating area? Uh, we have... Uh, is, there, is there a paint facility here someplace? Yeah. <laughs> if you want, what you can do, is the cabin still running? Yeah. Okay. What we do is when we get the engine cases ready, now these are uh, motors that when a customer calls up and they de depict like you that they want to have a motor built, uh, we get we try and get ahead by having all the engine cases and everything ready. Um, anything that is in a final stage of preparation, some of these cases are going to be stored for a long time. We go in and all the bearing races, all the studs, all mm -hmm. the metal parts of these cases are actually prepared, uh, or prepped and covered with strong arm just to keep them. Well, so everything you see up there has been strong armed and then strong put arm. into stock. And put into stock and ready for, ready right. for use. So that's long term storage of the piece yeah. that the customer is going to purchase yeah. down the road, whoever yeah. it may be. Yeah, well, so, how long it's So we're be. actually showing the, the, the functionality of, of your operation. Yeah. Not just uh, the product strong right. arm, but how Ameri it's, it's literally woven through the entire functionality of American Cycle Fab oh, itself. Yeah. In every application, yeah, there's it, virtually nothing we don't do that we don't actually use. From the front door lock to the loading dock. That's yeah. what we that's what we say at the factories, from from maintenance standpoints. Uh, what I've been using uh, another application of strong arm when we do the parkerizing of the original when we're doing these yeah original yeah yeah so you parkerize too. Uh, yep, I do the parkerizing. When we're done with the parkerizing, they always tell you dump dump the parts in oil to preserve the parkerizing and stuff. I don't use oil anymore. It's only strong arm. Okay. And, yeah, all when, of these and not very much of it, just a little on a piece just of a little bit. Piece of cloth. Like spray, yep, straight spray bottle, don't have to dunk it, just spray it down and wipe it with a cloth and it's ready to go. And that yeah. sits there uh, until? Until you're ready for the application. Could so be a, all, a decade. Yeah. So all of these bikes, oil tanks, once we've cleaned and de-rusted the inside of the, the oil tanks, uh -huh. um, this guaranteed is strong arm to the inside and it's fantastic because I can come back to this bike this was done probably four or five years ago. If we look on the inside of the oil tank, it's like the day it came out of the rust. Yeah, and it's damp in here. Yeah. I mean, there's no air conditioning in this end of the building. Yeah. Now, what about that trans transmission cases and gear cases? Yeah. What's your, what kind of uh, things do you do in that with those type of devices? Okay, when we build them, uh, they're assembled with an assembly lube, but the gears, when, before we close the transmission up, we just spray some on, strong arm over the gears and stuff and close it up might not be filled with oil because you don't know how long it's going to be before we actually get to right so it thing. sits there assembled so it sits there assembled mm -hmm. and i know i'm not going to have any other corrosion take place that you normally get when you finger and you handle parts mm -hmm. right exactly getting that yeah, yeah. the salts from your hand uh -huh. and sure give you the corrosion. so we have an incredible amount of cylinders uh, they're all being cleaned and prepped and gained. They've got the strong arm down the cylinder balls and on the valve seats. Yeah. Um, so that when we get ready for 
The and those, these are stored out here where it's come in the open. Yeah. Okay. The where there's no air conditioning, not a fan running. Nope. It's just in the, 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 the humidity of an old barn. Yep. Basically. 100% humidity. It's, it's 98 degrees out right now. And humidity is like 85%, 90%. It's, it's, you know, it's a heat wave. All of the gas tanks, all the internals, they're all being sprayed with straw roll. Um, any way I know to keep them. So you're, what you're running here is basically a, a, a preservation uh, room. I mean, uh, this everything here is in a state of this Number. is cryogenic storage. Yeah, that's what I call it. That's the it's the it's the uh, as far as the surfaces go, it's a cryogenic storage for these for the for the the surfaces of the metal. Amazing. There's there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces up there. How many different motorcycles can we build from all these pieces? <laughs> God. Goes on for like 60 feet. <laughs> so, beautiful. Well, here's the room. And this is where the painting goes on, eh? And you see what happens when you don't use strong on, but, but, oh, the, yeah. in, but the internal of that gas tank. Has been strong armed. And we can't see that well, but we'll try. And you can't really can't really see it. Yeah, it's just preserved on yeah. the inside. It's not rotting away. Yeah, you can't see so it. So it's a, a, preserving the insides of the tanks is a, a very important thing. Amazing. So you do all kinds of specialized little uh, ferrules and, and Yeah, this is for the, the, the next the, the turbocharged race bike. We're actually going to put that onto the front. Oh, the cool. Front wow, that, that's a little hard project. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'll be doing the layout Sweet. of the design yeah. and stuff like Excellent. that. Excellent. Yeah. That'll take quite a bit of a little uh, technique. Amazing. Awesome. Because you guys are involved with a lot of different things. People think you're just making up a bike and going down the salt. You're doing a lot of stuff here. Yeah. And people send you uh, motorcycles from all over the world. Well, and engines, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, our record at one stage was five different countries and fifteen different states. Really, motors we had in the shop at one time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. At one time. At one time. <laughs> fifteen yeah. states and five countries. Yeah. <laughs> that's sweet. That's now that's global, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's staying busy. Yeah. yeah. That's it's really staying busy. And keeping those guys going all the time. And here's a bunch of old raw iron and yep. bar stock and little compressors. This looks like another shop back here. That <laughs> you see that I see you got air in there and stuff. Yep. Cool. Okay. And what do we got? Anything out back we can look at? Man, not really. It's okay. Just trailers and. Getting the bike, he's, oh, getting, he's, a, he's getting a pit bike. He's doing right. a strong arm job. He's doing a strong Let's arm. Let's go look at it. Okay. This is a bike. I bought this bike um, for my pit bike. It's been standing for nearly 18 years, and uh, we're going to take it out of Bonneville. So what I need to do is is get it cleaned up, um, and we're getting the surface rust. You can see the look of this and the look yeah. of the rust on the outside. And this is what he's busy doing now, is getting the rims cleaned up. And that, was, that was a rusty rim, eh, dude? Oh, yes, it How much strong arm did you put on? A few drops? A couple drops, yeah. Oh, mind your hand. This is, this is what the rim originally looked like. He's already got it all done. No, there's a part that I didn't do yet. There's a part that he hasn't okay. done. I got it. Cameras only pick up 10% of what you can do with yourself. You're using an old bottle, an ancient bottle. Yeah, he has the front rim. See what the front room looks like. Uh huh. Yeah. That's we. I call that a fingernail job. See? Yeah. Put a couple of drops of strong arm on there. Rub it with your fingernail. Yeah. Those people. People replace parts. Yeah. That that can be uh, draw back. And it's not just cleaning it. It's the fact that once it's clean, it's going to stay pristine forever. Yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> I will just keep the thing strong arm. Yeah. You only have to put it on every what five or ten years. Yeah. It's. So this is going to be our pit bike, and the whole thing is going to be strong on. Right? And, and, and that's and you're going to redoing the carburetor and everything else. Yep. To run on the soil. I like the shroud. That'll keep the salt off the off the motor. It's a good idea. Well, it's a pit bike, you know, so we can travel backwards and forwards because distances uh -huh. are so vast out there.